In my early 20s, I walked into a machine shop for a job interview. The outside of the building looked like an old aircraft hangar made up of old beat up sheet metal. Most of the cars in the parking lot looked like they belonged in a junkyard. All around this building were piles of rusty sheet metal and structural components like I-beams. It was a hot mess. I entered the front office and let the receptionist know why I was there, and she acted irritated that I had disturbed her. She asked me to take a seat, and I sat there for over an hour waiting. As I waited, a couple guys came in and asked if I was there for an interview. I told them I was, and they laughed and said, Good luck, it's not too late to leave now. A few minutes later, I had the worst job interview I have ever had from the worst and most unprofessional manager I have ever met. I actually stood up and walked out of the building mid-interview. To this day, every time I drive past this place on the way to San Antonio, I thank God I walked out of there without a job. A lot of companies today are having a tough time finding skilled and qualified machinists and programmers. Some of this is due to the limited supply of these tradesmen, but a lot of this is the fault of the companies themselves. Before I'll even agree to a phone interview now, I'll thoroughly research a company. I'll visit their website, their social media pages, websites like Glassdoor where I can see what their past and current employees think of the place. I'll even take a look at their building via satellite and ask communities like our Facebook machinist group what others have experienced at this shop. I'm a programmer, but if I see a job posting that's offering me 70 bucks an hour but only pays machinist 18 an hour, or if I see a property that looks like a scrapyard, or hear several horror stories from other employees, or if I see pictures of their shop and it looks like something from the 1800s, You can count me out. And most good machinists and programmers that I know do exactly the same thing. How your company looks online may very well be causing 95% of the people you could have hired to completely ignore your job postings. Let's say your company looks great online and I come in for a job interview. As I tour the shop, I always look at the faces of the other employees. Are they energetic, laughing, smiling, welcoming, and putting out positive vibes? Or do they look angry and exhausted and look like they hate life? I'll be spending more time with these people than I will with my wife or children, so there's no way I'm going to work in a building that's full of negativity all week long. If people feel overworked, underpaid, undervalued, then they aren't going to be very happy at work, and that's a red flag for me. Next, does it look like the company's investing in modern technology and cutting tools? If they aren't, then they can't be competitive for long, and when I look for a job, I want it to be somewhere that I can feel secure for at least the next five years. Is the shop perfectly clean and organized with obvious 5S implementation? Nothing makes me crazier than spending an hour searching for a tool that isn't where it's supposed to be. So if I see stuff laying all over tables and workbenches, I immediately imagine the countless hours I'll either have to spend searching for things or the countless hours it'll take for me to organize the entire shop myself. Shop culture and the attitude of management toward their employees and their business are the two most important things when you're trying to recruit new talent. Exceptional people don't want to work at mediocre jobs. They want to work for the best shops in the world. They want to work in an environment where they can continue to grow their own skill set while helping the company to become more profitable. If your shop is not attractive to exceptional people, then you will likely struggle to find new employees or continue hiring mediocre talent. Keep your shop clean, organized, and cutting edge and take good care of the people that you already have, and you just might be surprised at who starts coming in looking for jobs. Thanks for listening. I'll talk to you guys again soon.